Exodus 16, <clears throat> verse 2. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured. Now they're in the wilderness against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. I mean, they're just griping and complaining. Some of them is legitimate. It's food and water. But faith in God. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God that we had died in the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. And we sat by the flesh pots. I mean, this pots of meat, stew, roast. And when we did eat bread to the full, for he had brought us forth into the wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. No, that's not the reason. Your grape and complaining expands the situation to what it's not. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Uh oh, God's going to speak. Behold, I will rain bread from heaven. Okay, th this, is, this is what we're looking at bread from heaven for you, Israel. And the people, now this is the. This is the situation. I'm going to give you bread from heaven. But this is what you must do. The people shall go out. And gather it. You got to go get it. And it ain't going to come down into your tent. It's not going to come down into your hands. You're not going to rub off a, a, a ticket and get, you know, the, the prize. It's not going to be on a roulette wheel. Or a slot machine. A certain rate every day. So, you can't take more or less. you got to take what's prescribed. It's like medication. Doctor gives you his prescription two tablets twice, twice a day but you don't take 14 and you don't take one that I may prove them now what God's going to see is are they going to listen to me do we listen to God I don't listen to God all the time all the time Whether they will walk in my law or no. It shall come to pass that on the sixth day. They shall prepare that which is bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So on the sixth day you're going to grab double. Because the next day, the seventh day. There is no manna coming. It's the Sabbath. You don't do no work at all. Sabbath, is, you don't even go out and get bread. Aren't you glad you're under the law? Because how could you go to church on the Sabbath if you can't even go out and get bread? By the way, the Sabbath was the seventh day. The church meets on the first day. It's never called Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's a Roman concoction. That ain't Bible. And Moses there and said unto all the children of Israel at even night after 6 p.m. Then ye shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning, 6 a.m. Then shall ye see the glory of the Lord. You're going to go to sleep. You're going to go to bed. Then in the morning. For that he heareth your murmuring. Here's your griping and complaining. Your grumblings. Against the Lord. Go ahead. Grumble against your preacher. Grumble against your spouse. Your boss. Your parents. The President of the United States. And you are grumbling. Against the Lord. Which are we. That ye murmur against us, Moses and Aaron. 
And Moses said, Thus shall be, when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which you murmur. God listens against him, God. And what are we, Moses and Aaron? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. So when you murmur against a man of authority, Biden, it's against the Lord, not that man, or your preacher, or your boss, or your spouse, or your parent, or any person of authority. Verse 12, same chapter. And the Lord has heard your murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them, saying, At evening ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. I am, I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that evening, the quails came up, those are birds, and covered the camp in the morning. So at, at evening there were quails, there were birds. In the morning, the dew, you've seen dew, that's that morning moisture, lay about the host. You know, that's what the Roman Catholics call their little devil wafer. They call it the host. And they turn around and say it's Jesus Christ. Blasphemy. When the dew that lay was gone, up, oh, Behold, upon the face of the wilderness, so the dew has gone, there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. So the frost disappears, and then there's this round, white looking like frost. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. For they wist not what it was. Manna means, what is it? They look at the stuff that God provided, they said, what is it, manna? So, the 40 years in the wilderness, they ate, what is it? That God provided. And we'll look at the scriptures. For they wished not what it was, and Moses said to them, This is the bread, this is the bread, manna, which the Lord has given you to eat. Pay attention to that. And this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating. An omer for every man. According to the number of your person, take every man for them which are in your tent. So if you've got five people living in your tent, you get five omers. Three people, three omers. One person, one omer. Ten, you got ten omers. That's prescribed. You would have to have a measuring cup. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. Disobedience. More than an omer, less than an omer. And when they did meet it, measure it, with an omer, so when they put it in the, in the measuring cup, he that gathered much had nothing over. He that gathered little had no act. Black, excuse me. They gathered every man according to his seed. So you didn't get more than you should. And you didn't get less than you should. You got an omer. Nothing more, nothing less. And Moses said, let no man leave it of it to the morning. There is no leftovers. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left it unto the morning, and bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. So, all right, eat what you got, no leftovers, 
the next day, people had leftovers and it stunk. And there was worms. You couldn't eat it. You don't listen to the word of God, you get worms and it stinks. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. And it came to pass that in the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto him, This is the which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of this holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which will be baked today and seed, cook in a pot, that ye see. And that which remains over, lay it up for you to keep on the morning, the seventh day. They laid it up to morning as the Lord bay, and it did not stink, neither was there any worms therein. So when you do what God told you to do, when there is a, a special commandment, every day for the five days you gather one omer and you don't carry it over and those that did carry it over worms and stunk on the sixth day you gather two a double portion cook it up meat it whatever you do with your manna what is it you lay it up and when you wake up in the morning that won't have worms neither will it stink and you will eat that on the Sabbath. Because you can't do nothing on the Sabbath. That's a day of rest. And Moses said, Eat that today, for a day uh, is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh, which is a Sabbath, in it there shall be none. So on the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week, you stay in your tents and eat what you gathered the previous day. And it came to pass there went out some of the people on the seventh day to gather. And they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments? Well, they still didn't listen to God. That's remarkable. Verse 35. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years until they came to the land inhabited. They did eat manna. What is it? Until they came into the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is a tenth part of an ephah. Now another thing. It says in verse 32. Moses said, This is the thing that the Lord has commanded. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generation, that ye may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot, put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. So, we're going to read about this a little bit later. This manna was 40 years. Manna means what is it? They never got the name of manna. There was a certain great five days they were to gather it. On the sixth day, it would be double. On the seventh day, there would have been no bread. You don't lay it up. Some people laid it up. And it got worms and stank. Some people gathered less. They had an omer. Some people gathered more. They had an omer. Some people went out on the seventh day. There was none. But Moses tells Aaron, Here, take some of this manna and omer, put it in a pot, and it never stunk and never bred bread. And we'll see how, how far that goes. Okay, numbers. Numbers. A chapter 11 verse 6 
but our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. They're having manna every day. Manna roast, manna stew, fricassee manna, manna out of the cart. Manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof is the color of bedillium. Don't help us out. And the people went out about and gathered it and ground it in mills. It made it to a powder and beat it into mortar and baked it into pans. So they actually made cake and made cakes of it. And the, case, the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. To me, I would think the taste would have been like fried dough. But I don't know. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. So, they're quite angry. They're sick and tired of manna. Manna this. Manna that. Manna today. Manna tomorrow. Manna yesterday. What is it? What is it? What is it? We're not satisfied. This is what the bread that God gave them. And they're not satisfied. Friend, this pitches the modern church today. This pitches the lie of the senior church age. We gotta have fun. We gotta have entertainment. We gotta have a, a theme VBS for the children to play and have a good time in the Lord. We can't have any hellfire tent preaching gospels anymore. I read today that they're going to have a revival, you know, a wilderness revival, whatever, and they're going to have, you know, contests, and they're going to have a shooting thing, and they're going to have this, and they're going to have that. Oh, yeah, and at 7 o'clock, we're going to have preaching when the people are tired and their bellies are full. You know what happened when the disciples had their belly, their belly filled at the Last Supper? Three of them fell asleep while Jesus was praying in the garden. You get a good meal in your stomach, you're going to want to sleep. Remember Thanksgiving? Remember the Christmas dinner? You want to sleep. So they're sticking tired. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 8. Verse 3. And he humbled thee to suffer thee to hunger. God made you get hungry. Well, we ain't got no groceries. Maybe God is doing a lesson for you. Listen, whether, whether it be you, whether it be Satan, whether it be God, God's in charge of it all. And if it's you, God has put up many barriers of his word, hopefully you read, of preaching, of teaching, of prayer, to prevent you to go on the road you don't belong. Read Pilgrim's Progress. God allows Satan to attack men. Job 1 and 2. And then God does it for our being. He suffered thee to hunger. He fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not. Manna means I don't know what it is. Neither did your fathers know. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob never knew what manna was. Or the twelve tribes. That he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. That is the quotation. After Satan said to Jesus, I will give you all the kingdoms if you doubt, bow down before me and worship me. Jesus Christ quotes this verse.
or it might have been, excuse me, it might have been the verse where he said, turn these rocks in, in, into bread. That's, I believe, where it came from. America has got a mouth-belly problem. They always want to fill their mouth so their bellies would be full. There are people in third world nations who don't have food. And yet they, they yearn and are fed and are satisfied by what God gives them. Americans are not satisfied. Joshua. Joshua 5. 12. Verse 11, Joshua 5, 11. They did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover. Unleavened cakes and parched corn the self same day. So now they have entered the promised land. The land that God's given them. And they are eating the corn and the food that's been stored up by the enemy. And the manna ceased on the morning after they have eaten the old corn of the land. And neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Cana that year. So, 40 years is done. They have entered into the land of Cana, and as soon as they start eating the bread of Cana, there is no more bread from God. Now people say that this manna will symbolize the word of God. You, you read it every morning and you get the digestion of every morning. And then what do you do with Joshua? Well, you know, Joshua, when they get into the promised land of Canaan, and it stops because the Christian goes to heaven. No, I ain't going to Cana. I'm on my way to New Jerusalem. Israel has battles and fights and, and, and they rebel against God and they want a king and they get a wicked king and they get a good king and they get a wicked king and Babylon comes and it destroys Jerusalem. That's not going to happen in my Christian life. I'm coming back on horseback after Jesus but I'm not going to have to fight. You tell me once I get into heaven, once I once I'm absent from this body present with the Lord, you tell me that I'm never going to hear the word of God again? The word of God is Jesus Christ. I read the word of God daily about seven o'clock at night. Once it starts getting dark, once my house starts settling down. There are times I've been in the hospital. There are times I'm sick and i got ailments and I can't read it that day. I will read it double the next day so I'll be up to date. I've been times where I've been in the hospital for a week. I haven't been able to read the Word of God for a week. I will read, start reading double pages, double days, I mean, until I reach to the current day of reading the Word of God. Now, according to the man, according to the Bible with manna, I'm not supposed to read double pages, except for, but I don't celebrate the Sabbath. There is no Sabbath. There is no rest for the Word of God. It's to be daily, yes, every day, yes. And you don't get sick and tired. Churches are sick and tired. That's why you got these new versions. I've been in churches where the pastor gets up to the podium. He don't even have a Bible. I've had pastors get up in the pulpit. King James. They don't believe the King James. You got people in the, in, in the congregation. They're King James. They don't even know what King James means. They don't even know the doctrines. It's foolish. Psalms. 
the book of Psalms, 78, 78, 24. Now we're going to start learning some things. 78, 24 Psalms. And had rained down manna, what is it? Upon them to eat, Israel. And had given them, here we go, the corn of heaven. There it is. We saw that. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the food, and that's the bird. What is it? It's angels' food. Angels eat manna. And God took some of the manna from the angels and gave it to the nation of Israel. And you couldn't take more because you were probably robbing the angels. And you couldn't take less because then the angels would get more than there. And we have a thing called today angels food cake. We also have a thing called, for the host of the Roman Catholic Church, you have a devil's food cake. I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to get into it. But that devil's food cake is what that host is of the Roman Catholic Church. The angel, it's not angel's food cake, it's angel's food is the manna. That Israel never knew. And when you read your Bible. Scripture with scripture. Okay it's not manna no more. It's angels food. And you don't ever hear a, a, a preacher. Or a Sunday school teacher say. He fed them in the wilderness. With angel food. And that Israel did not know what it was. They called it manna. What is it? It's angels food. Psalms 105. Psalms 105, 40. The people asked and he brought quails. That was that evening. And satisfied them with the bread of heaven. Angels were man. It has three names. The bread of heaven, angel's food, and manna. Which provided by God. And the children of Israel got sick of it. I don't think the angels have got sick of it. We don't know how old the angels are. We know God <laughs> created them. We don't know at what point in time. But I would assume if, if that's angels food. Angels have been eating it all the time since they've been. And you know what? Maybe except for the angels that fell to Satan. They're not complaining. And yet we Christians. I said we. Including me. We start complaining. And if you say you don't complain, you're a liar. There's something in your life, in your walk, in your career, in your marriage, in your church, in your car. There is something that aggravates you. That you get to complaining. But we don't take our complaining into prayer. We blame Moses and Aaron. Where they say, listen, you're complaining against God, not us. Why don't we just take our complaint in prayer and say, God, and I've done this. And you tell God what you're griping about. God will listen. And when we give God the answers... He probably starts laughing. John 6. John 6. This is Jesus. 49. 
Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven. Point to himself. That a man may not, I'm choosing, a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. This is where the Catholics get all messed up. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. He says in verse 55, My flesh is meat. Meat was the quails. At, at, at night. And my blood is drink indeed. For he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, I in him. And the copies get that all messed up. Verse 58, This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. Now what the Jews are saying there, you know, the manna. The manna is special. The manna. The manna. The manna. The manna. You know, people go around, my church, my church, my church. Come to my church. I give you an invite to our church. Have you been to our church? Are you pastor? What about our pastor? This is our pastor. Our pastor's got a thing. We, and that's what the church does. And they forget. They don't tell them about Jesus. They go to Matthew. But Mark says, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Matthew's, I forget what they call it. doesn't have anything said about preaching. You go to the world and you teach them. That's what Matthew says. Mark says preach the gospel. Not your movies. Not your VBS. Not your great pastor. Not your great church. Not the concert. It's about Jesus. And Jesus is lacking. And Jesus was lacking in the nation of Israel when he's living and breathing alive. And they're lacking Jesus. And they have uphold, like the Catholic Church, the, the manna. They can't even get the manna. And for the nation of Israel at the time of Jesus, the manna is, what is it? Though the book of Psalms has been written. Verse 63. This is the spirit that quickeneth. Gives life. The flesh profiteth nothing. If you could eat the body of Jesus. If you could drink his blood. Jesus just said. That won't do you no good. You can go eat quails. Ain't gonna do you no good. That, that church would say, you know, they're gonna go out hunting and all that. All right, yeah, and they're gonna eat the meat and all that. That ain't gonna do you no good. The fresh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words and the word of God today has become stale. And I'm sick of it. And I'm tired of it. we got to have a revision. We've got to change it. we got to put it away. We'll put it up on the screen. We won't check our pastor out. Because our pastor is number one. And they got into griping and complaining. Here they're going to give Jesus the cross. Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9. 4. Scripture is scripture. Verse 3. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest wall, the holies of holies, 
which had the golden censer, the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot, oh, that's interesting, that had manna, and Aaron's rod that bought it. Remember when we read in, in Exodus that Moses told Aaron to grab I forgot what the measurement was. Eve? No, not Eve. An omer of manna and put it in a pot. And they put it up in the testimony. Well, Hebrew says that that pot was gold. Aaron brought a golden pot. And it was put in the ark of the testimony. And I don't care what Harrison Ford... Or anybody else, you're not going to find that, that that Ark of the Covenant here on earth. It's in heaven. It was raptured by God. And when we go to heaven, when I go to heaven, by the blood of Jesus Christ alone, on April 25th, 1987, I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. That's how I'm going to heaven. I put my faith and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone. I left religion. When I see the Ark of the Covenant in heaven, I'll see it. I'm going to see that gold pot. I don't know if I'm ever going to get permission to lift that lid because Isaiah or Uzzah just touched the Ark. And he, he put the death. But I'm going to see that golden pot. I'm going to know, hey, that's where the manna is. What's the manna? It's the bread of heaven. What's the bread of heaven? It's the angel's food. And you ask your typical Baptist today about manna. And they have no idea. Manna is manna. What is it? I can tell you about the book of Revelation. Yeah, but the book of Revelation is only four or five chapters, maybe six or seven, of the church age. Or the Christians. The rest of it is the nation of Israel and the world. I can tell you how we take care of the grass. I can tell you all about the school our pastor went. It's not about that. It's about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, He is the type of manna, except the manna that the Israel ate, the men died. But in Christ, there is no death. You're absent from the body present with the Lord. Or you're raptured. Through Jesus Christ alone. You don't eat wafers. and That's nonsense. That's religion. So that's about the manna. What is it? Angel's food. Found in the King James Bible. 